Hello, viewers. Uh, this is Alex D. Fiore. Today is Monday, September 21st. And uh, the reason for my video upload this evening is um, because I happened to come upon an article that was uh, written by a gentleman named uh, Henry uh, Maykow, and I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Uh, the, the article was written back in February of 2007, I, um, and I was very, very enlightened, uh, to say the least, uh, from the, the contents of, of how he was able to logically break down the nefarious systematic ploy of this Rockefellian movement to essentially marginalize family values. Um, I've always, you know, I've always known that, um, that, you know, business matters, I mean, having a family is, is considered, um, you know, a small business, if you will. Um, but, you know, I never before until this year have I really taken a broad stroke perspective on it, um, and understanding how this this uh, movement, this, you know, uh, what happened during the 1940s and 50s as part of the Rockefeller movement um, did to systematically break down the, the, the nuclear, nuclear family unit. And, and it does so. Um, and I'll have the link provided to you um, at the end here. But uh, basically the big picture is, is the, uh, the central banking system um, and how you know, by the use of um, uh, taxation and, and um, uh, they've been able to create this false sense of empowerment among women by playing on their, uh, playing on, on insecurities, um, you know, uh, on, on fear, essentially, fear of being, of being subjugated, um, villainizing men, um, you know, here just to kind of touch upon a few bullet points. Uh, number one, men can no longer be tr trusted, um, which was this part of the systematic breakdown of of, uh, of how the Illuminati have um, undermined women's natural loving instincts. Number two is uh, that women are victims uh, by virtue of their sex. Um, and there, you know, the, it says here, uh, but, you know, because we are women, we remain victims in our private lives, at work, in society as a whole. And the author here is paraphrasing uh, another article. Um, women must have a sense of grievance, entitlement, and rebellion. And the same tactic, it says here, was used to manipulate Jews, blacks, workers, and gays. So essentially, victimizing oneself, creating pity, which leads to frustration, which then it makes it a lot easier for them to, women in general, to villainize um, men. Uh, oh, I, I skipped around, sorry. Um, going back to the first one here, men who, uh, can no longer be trusted. Uh, <laughs> the Lifetime Network uh, was, was, uh, was using as an example, saying that uh, men are all unfaithful rats, abusive monsters, dishonest scumbags, or all the above. Uh, I mean, you know, when you... And I was thinking about this uh, earlier. I was like, well, if you tell a child, for example, that they are stupid, um, you know, you keep telling you that child that they're stupid, and then eventually they're just going to convince themselves of that reality, and they'll never grow up to achieve anything because... They've been victims of circumstance. Um, number three, women should be selfish. Liberation and narcissism have merged. Leisure now means time for yourself, spent alone, or perhaps with one's girlfriends, but definitely without spouse and kids. Uh, it says here that the uh, important you know, part of the, the newest feminist gospel is to indulge yourself the new feminist gospel is that of indulging uh, yourself to be an important part of being a healthy, well-adjusted woman. Now, if you think about that for a minute, I mean, isn't that 
pretty much where we are today. It, you know, isn't everyone so engrossed with themselves? Have you know they, hasn't everyone just been conforming to this egocentric mindset where if it's not if it doesn't concern me, uh, then why should I care? I mean, that's just the way that I, you know, I look around and that's all I see. Um, you know, uh, altruism is a thing of the past. I mean, it's just, just what is. And lastly here, uh, or second to last here, sex is not reserved for love and marriage. So, um, magazines like uh, Glamour, Cosmo, uh, I mean, you know, they, these subliminal messaging that these magazines are responsible for is telling these young readers you know, to that it's okay to wear um, makeup and and uh, you know put out on the first date and, and and you know so you know once this you know love and marriage are discredited thanks to the the Rockefellian movement, then women don't have anything they they cannot offer love, so they offer sex and that's in which explains why they take on this very superficial self-image where, you know, they place the emphasis upon what they look like in order to attract someone else who is really just going after the same because they, are, they too are victims of circumstance. And it goes on to say that, you know, at the same time that Cosmo and Glamour were being published, uh, Playboy magazine, you know, achieved a similar objective where basically their message was to men was um, it's okay to you know have sex and not not get married um, you know marriage and children are a bore you know you just don't you why you know you you can have your cake and need it too basically so anyway that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you today but it does affirm my belief that we really need to make a paradigm shift in this current society uh, in order to to usher in a return to uh, sound moral values and a, a rebirth, a regeneration of the nuclear family um, that has been blown to shreds, uh, torn to shreds, rather, um, since this Rockefellian movement has, has begun. Thanks for your time. God bless.